Hello, and welcome to this short screencast where we're going to introduce a new feature of GeoGebra, namely the spreadsheet view. A spreadsheet is a piece of software that's designed to work like an accountant's ledger, where we keep track of calculations done on columns of data. Microsoft Excel is probably the best known example of a spreadsheet. They are extremely useful tools for calculus as well, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use GeoGebra's spreadsheet to estimate values of a derivative of a function where the function is not given as an explicit formula, but rather as a table of data. So let's start with GeoGebra open in the standard view with the algebra window on the left and the graphics view on the right. To open GeoGebra's spreadsheet, go to View, then Spreadsheet. This will open up a spreadsheet on the right side of the window next to the graphics view. And in this spreadsheet, we can enter in some data. So let's suppose I have a function that is given only as a table of data. And here is that table. I'm going to first enter the data into the spreadsheet and then have GeoGebra do some estimates of the derivative of this function. Before we do that, though, you should know that the little rectangles in a spreadsheet that eventually will hold our data are known as cells, and we refer to cells by using their column letter and their row number. This, for example, is cell C4. Now with that, let's create our spreadsheet for the function and then calculate its derivative. To organize all this data, I'm going to use the top row to create table headings telling me what belongs in each column. So in the first column, here in A1, I'm going to type quote T, end quote, and hit enter. This puts the letter T in that cell as a text value. In cell B1, next door to it, I'll type quote G of T, end quote, and hit enter. And similarly, in cell C1, I'm going to type quote G prime of T, end quote. Now I have column headings, just as I would if I were writing out this or putting it into a word processing document. Now in the columns for t and for g of t, I'm just going to go through and enter in the function data by hand, hitting enter after each cell to move on to the next one and using my arrow keys if I need to. And at this point, we're going to see what the spreadsheet can really do. I'm going to put in some estimates to the derivative of g into the third column using the forward difference formula. That means, for example, g prime of 0 is going to be estimated by taking g of 1, one step forward, which is in this cell, minus g of 0, which is here. And that will be divided by 1, which is here, minus 0, which is here. Now, I could type this in manually like so. If I want to make a spreadsheet do a calculation for me, whenever I want to do that, I'm going to go to the cell where I want the calculation to happen and first type in an equal sign. The equal sign indicates to the spreadsheet that it's about to do a calculation and that you're not just going to enter in some data by hand. Again, I could have the spreadsheet do the calculation by typing in equals and then typing in this fraction being very careful to parenthesize both the numerator and the denominator to avoid errors in the order of operations. When I hit enter, you'll see the derivative estimate. That will calculate the derivative for the cell, but the problem is I would have to completely redo this calculation all over again for the next cell and the next one and the next one. Now, I don't want to have to type in all this stuff again, so instead, I'm going to do this. First, let me go back and delete the formula from the cell. Then I'm going to type equals, again, because I'm about to tell the spreadsheet to do a calculation. Now I'm going to type in the same formula in again as I did before, but instead, this time of typing the number from the cell, I'm going to type in the name of the cell, that is the cell reference instead. When I'm done, I hit enter, and you'll see I get the same result as before. However, this time, watch what happens when I click on the cell, and then find the little square at the bottom right of the cell, and then click and drag that cell down through the rest of the column. The spreadsheet automatically calculated all the remaining cells using the same forward difference formula that was in the first one, but it intelligently referred to the correct cell, changing the cell reference every time I changed cells. Click on any one of these cells and you'll see the formula up in the formula bar, and you can see that the cell reference really did change. So this is called a relative cell reference when you type in a formula that involves a cell name rather than the actual value within it. And it's the real power of a spreadsheet. So I can calculate the entire column of derivatives with just one formula entry that I drag down. On a calculus side note, observe that, observe that I chose not to put an entry into that final cell down here. Now you should think about why that is, and there is a reason why there is nothing in that cell. 
Now, to give you some further practice, I want you to pause the video in a moment, and in GeoGebra, in your own copy of GeoGebra, go over and construct a fourth column here that will calculate the estimate for the derivative use of g using a backwards difference formula instead. Take a couple of minutes to do this, and then when you're done, unpause the video, and I'll show you the process. So that's how to use GeoGebra's spreadsheet to do numerical calculations. And finally, just note that all the syntax that I used in GeoGebra's spreadsheet also works perfectly in more popular spreadsheets like Excel or the spreadsheet inside Google Docs. Thanks for watching.